Most of the people at this week's trade show probably won't ever visit Saudi. After all, unless it's for business or religious tourism, visas are pretty hard to come by. But by the looks of the stand behind me, which is one of the biggest and the most decadent with its fake turrets and castle-like appearance, it seems like Saudi authorities are trying to make the place more appealing. These men trying to show off Saudi's culture inside the stand weren't exactly rushed off their feet. But there was obvious interest in speaking to businesses from the kingdom. As chair of this organization and the government representative who are running the show is to really get tourism to stand on its feet as a major sector in the Saudi economy. We believe so tourism and the, our economic council and the council ministers believe so that tourism will be the, probably the largest job creator in Saudi Arabia. So for us it's critical that the mindset is there to be able to become even more welcoming to the, to the tourist. No doubt the past two years of regional unrest have concentrated minds. Saudi, like many parts of the Middle East and North Africa, has a huge youth unemployment problem and expanding the tourism industry could help create much needed jobs. But there's more to it than that. The government's been getting wise to its own people's potential. A recent survey showed that Saudis are the biggest spenders when they travel abroad, budgeting for an average of just over $6,500 a trip. Compare that with a global average of under $2,500, and that's reason enough to try and convince Saudis to stay at home and spend their money. And where better to do that than in cities like Mecca? Regarded as the holiest place in Islam, all Muslims have to make pilgrimage here at least once in their lives. Developers and international hotel chains have realized that putting money here makes sense, with rooms going for thousands of dollars a night during religious festivals. It's a religious destination for over 1.6 billion Muslims around the world. So we would look at that figure as a, a huge potential for us. You have uh, the airport expansion, Jeddah Airport. You have the railway, which is going to connect all major cities of Saudi, mainly religious cities, Mecca, Medina, with Jeddah, with the airport. And you have the infrastructure of uh, expanding the Grand Mosque in Mecca and Medina. And you have all the new towers coming up. You have a tremendous number of towers coming up in the Grand Mosque, around the Grand Mosque. While money is pouring into religious cities and Saudi businesses like budget airline Nasser is expanding within the country, there is a feeling that opening Saudi up to a wider audience would have a knock-on effect for lots in the industry. In other part of the world, obviously, the tourism in, uh, for an airline industry is a very por large portion of, uh, of, of its business. And, uh, and therefore, we're, we're trying to encourage this. Uh, and, and work with the Saudi Tourism Board to, uh, to actually have means to ease the tourism. And, uh, but we can start already with the Saudis discovering their own kingdom better and therefore offering a good domestic network is part of that strategy. Uh, there's a very large number of expats that actually live within the kingdom. Two million expats live in the kingdom and a lot of them would like to discover Saudi. So we have to build in the infrastructure so that it's there present. And as the time go by, I'm, I'm very optimistic in the fact that as the time go by, we'll ease the, uh, the tourism, at least coming from the GCC, which they don't have the same restrictions, obviously, uh, to not only come to Mecca, but to discover and visit other places in the kingdom. There's certainly been interest here at the fair, at least in the freebies that Saudi's been giving away. But until the country relaxes its tourist rules, it looks like there'll be more people pushing their luggage around these stands than packing their bags for Riyadh.